Have you been expecting God to do something in your life, but none seems forthcoming? You keep seeing visions of God's plans for you whenever you pray. However, it all ends in the realm of the Spirit. Nothing is physically shifting in your life. Beloved, this may be a sign that God is preparing you for what you have been praying for. You need these things urgently, but God has to work in your life first. Else, you may mishandle your answers when they come. Therefore, watch this video till the end as I will unveil the ways God employs to prepare you for what you have been praying for. Armed with this knowledge, you will have nothing to worry about. You will begin to align with God's plan and let Him perform His will in your life. The season of preparation is very crucial in a man's life. It highlights the time to shed off excesses and build new and godly characters. It's a time of growth and lessons, and yes, it's a time of trials and temptations. If you don't go through this season, you might miss out on what God wants to do in your life. If you think you can skip it, the devil will dash you a false version of what you pray for. Therefore, don't be in a hurry. Let God work on you to the maximum. How then do you identify God's work in your life? How do you know he's preparing you for what you have prayed for? The first sign is that he gives you the strength to wait on him. Many Christians don't understand the meaning of waiting on God. They try to get out of that season and begin sourcing alternatives. They complain and grumble about what God has not done for them. They do all these because they've lost the strength to keep waiting on him. But when you begin to feel a surge of energy to wait on God, you are very close to receiving your answers. God uses this season to build some godly characteristics like self-control, resilience, and temperament in you. As you faithfully work through the processes, He sheds off impatience and other works of the flesh from your life. God builds your feet in this season. He strengthens your body, soul, and spirit for what He's about to do in your life. The waiting season will help you to walk in God's way. You will not fall by the wayside because you are standing on the rock that never fails. David felt contented with the bush because he knew God was preparing him for the throne. That was his prayer request, but he diligently served his father in the bush, learning war tactics no one knew about. No wonder he became the greatest soldier of his time. This also strengthened his relationship with God. He couldn't do anything without consulting him first. Why? God had worked on his life. God has prepared him for everything he became. Are you also going to wait until God says go? And if you are already waiting, endeavor to stay there. Don't move when he hasn't told you to move. You are nearer to your answers than you think. God is preparing you for your answers when you begin to develop a passion for the things of God, not minding if he blesses you or not. Before God answers your prayers, he wants to ensure you will not replace him with the answers. So, he waits to see if you will strive to seek him even when he seems silent. God uses this method to make you understand that what matters to him is your fellowships with him, not the things attached to them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It's a simple law. If you seek God and his kingdom, you will receive whatever you ask for. This is what many believers are not ready to do, and because of that, God holds the answers to their prayers. They then begin to struggle in life. Seek God faithfully. It's part of what God uses to prepare you for what you have been praying for. Psalms 119 verses 169 through 170 says, May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. This is the psalmist's cry for a need. He earnestly prayed with passion for God's promise over his soul. Similarly, when God prepares you for what you have been praying for, he places a deep burden on your heart to pursue that blessing. This isn't a selfish desire for something. It's a passion that's exemplified in the place of prayer. You feel an intense heat when you mention it. This is a sign that God is preparing you for its manifestation. And you may want to ask, why the burden? Isn't it what you've been praying for before now? The special burden helps you to war against the obstacle hindering your answers. A woman carries a child for nine months, but the moment it's time for delivery, 
The woman travails and yearns to give birth to the child. That's how it is with you. Once you feel this deep burden, don't cool it off. Trash it out in the place of prayer. God wants you to travail for the answers. Also, God opens your eyes to biblical characters who resonate with your current circumstances. As you study God's word, the Holy Spirit is beside you. He knows what you need. He knows your heart requests for you not to become weary. He directs your path to characters who have gone through the same route you are taking. As you encounter these characters, God will begin to teach you lessons. You will see what they've gone through. This will let you know the stage you are in and where you are going. Discouragement won't have a place in your heart anymore. Why? You've seen men who had gone through the same lane. But the big question is, how often do you study God's word? I hope you haven't become tired of studying. God's word is the primary way God uses to prepare you. Endeavor to open and study. You will learn more than you think. Another way to know that God is preparing you for what you have been praying for is that he removes harmful people from your life. When a farmer plants crops, as they mature, weeds grow with them. At this point, the farmer picks up his tools and works on the weeds. He clears the weeds and leaves the crops to mature. What's the implication of that? The farmer has paved more space for the crops to fully flourish and be fruitful. Now, the crops may enjoy the company of the weeds. However, the farmer knows better than the crops. To the crops, the weeds are friends, but to the farmer, they can debar its growth. That's how it is with you. To you, some people are not harmful, they are friends. However, God knows that if he should give you the answers to your prayers, they will shrink your glory. Just as the crops can't flourish with the weeds around them, you can't receive all answers with the wrong people around you. That's why God prunes them off before giving you your desires. Then, God pushes you beyond your limits to prepare you for what you've been praying for. Your capacity determines what can stay in your life. You don't expect a cup to accommodate your breakfast of rice and chicken. That's impossible because the cup does not have the capability. Similarly, you request some things when you haven't built the capability. You may not know this, but God knows it. So, He will begin to push you off your limits. He will put you in situations that will drive you to do more. For instance, you are trusting God for a new business. You want to become a CEO. You don't want any boss to be above you. That's a good decision. However, you are the type that wakes up late and gets to work late. You hardly round up assignments. You don't have any business management skills. Yet, you want God to bless you. God knows you are not ready. Therefore, he will put you under a boss that will drive you seriously. This person will be hard on you until you stretch your limits. As you stretch yourself, you are unknowingly walking into your answers. When God certifies you are fit to be a CEO, he will give you a viable business idea. The business will survive because God has stretched your capabilities. So, accept this stretching so that God can lead you to your desired place. God also prepared you for your answers by disciplining you. Sounds unpleasant, but that's what you need. When you do anything wrong, God will chastise you. As you are going through a journey, he will chase and guide you at the same time. That is why the psalmist said that his rod and staff comfort him. The rod is a correction tool. The staff offers guidance. You need to accept both for you to receive your answers. Ensure you do not refuse his chastisement, which can debar his blessings. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 8 says, And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their fathers? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. The verse says that if God doesn't rebuke you, you are not his child, and that means you can't receive anything from him. So, when God disciplines you, rejoice. 
that's a sign that your heart request is on the way. Lastly, God prepares you for what you pray for when facing diverse challenges. Sometimes you wonder why everyone seems to be against you. You wonder why all things are not working for you. This isn't God punishing you. He's only preparing you for your answers. If you don't go through these tough times, it'll be hard to acknowledge what God has done for you. You might think your strength has led you there. Moreover, these challenges build your courage to fight whatever stands as an obstacle in your life. This was the dilemma of the Israelites when they left Egypt. There's a very short route to the Promised Land. However, God directed them on the way to the Red Sea. He took them through the wilderness throughout those years. The Israelites earnestly desired the Promised Land, but encountered challenges. When they eventually got there, God used the challenges to strengthen their faith. They had the boldness to claim their inheritance. Similarly, your challenges are not to break you, but to build you. And sure, you accept God's ways of preparing you for what you have been praying for. You will rejoice at the end. The Christian journey is a beautiful tapestry woven with prayers, desires, hopes, and God's promises. Prayer is a powerful tool that connects you with the Almighty God, allowing you to communicate your deepest desires and concerns to Him. As a Christian, you learn to seek God's will through prayer, placing your trust in Him while awaiting His response. But what happens when your prayers are unanswered? Do you stay by faith, preparing your barns for the blessings no matter how long it takes? Or do you simply find an alternative to God? You might have been waiting for so long for a breakthrough, a miracle, or a fulfillment of your desires. You must embrace God's perfect timing and shift your focus from what you're expecting from God to preparing yourself to receive from Him. Beloved, know this, for there to be an outpouring from God, there must be vessels prepared to receive from Him. So, how do you get ready for what you prayed for? First, you need to examine the nature of your prayer. Prayer is not merely a wish list that you present to God, expecting Him to fulfill your every desire at your specified time. Instead, prayer is an intimate conversation with your Heavenly Father, where you align your heart with His will and seek His guidance and provision. When you pray, you surrender your desires to Him, trusting He knows what is best for you. Next, you need to embrace the waiting period. Often, the most challenging part of prayer is the waiting period. Many people find it difficult to hold on to God at this point, but God is not only concerned with answering your prayers, but also transforming you during the waiting process. During this time, doubt, impatience, and discouragement may creep in if your heart is unguarded. However, it is crucial to remember that God's timing is perfect. Isaiah 55, 8-9, NIV says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God sees the bigger picture, and His plans for you are greater than anything you can imagine. Throughout the waiting process, constantly remind yourself of His past faithfulness. Reflecting on past prayers, testimonies of His provision, and His promises in Scripture can help you trust that He is working all things together for your good. Even in seasons of uncertainty, you can be still, knowing that He is with you, guiding you and preparing you for what you have prayed for. Aside from all that, God's answer to your prayers might require action on your part. Do not only hope for blessings, but also actively work towards them. This does not in any way imply you're trying to help God. It may mean stepping out of your comfort zone, embracing new challenges, or even letting go of past hurts. Oftentimes, it may be a simple obedience to divine instruction, and in the course of obeying, you encounter your long-awaited answers. Getting ready also means acknowledging that God works in different ways, and He can choose to answer your prayers differently from the norm. Being open-minded to understand the different dimensions of God is also one of the ways to get ready. If you're rigid in your walk with God and only stick to the little you know about Him and His ways, you will miss out on a whole lot from God. 
Getting ready means believing God's promises are true and allowing His Spirit to guide you through uncharted territories. With each step, you learn to trust Him more and experience Him in different dimensions. Another step is getting ready for what you've prayed for is to enlarge your heart. Do not think too small. Your little perspective does not make God little. He is the mighty God. He owns the entire universe. So expect big things. Do not limit the jars you're to borrow. Dream big. Make massive plans. Be audacious with your faith because you serve a big God. Step out from the petty prayers of asking God for daily bread. Ask Him to move mountains. Stop asking Him to help you fix your old car. Ask Him for the latest model. He owns the universe and everything in it. Or should have an opportunity to meet the prime minister or the president of your country and be given the privilege to ask for anything. You wouldn't be asking for a meal ticket. In 1 Chronicles 4.10 NIV, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Beloved, you need to enlarge your heart, which will directly influence the expansion of your capacity. Who knows? This might be why God has not yet released the blessings you've prayed for, because He needed to bring you to the place of expansion before the massive outpouring of His blessings. But to enlarge your heart, you need to cultivate an intimate relationship with God. As you wait for the fulfillment of your prayers, it is essential to deepen your relationship with God. Spend time in His presence through prayer, studying His Word and seeking His guidance, trusting that He will do all that He has spoken. The hymn writer says, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The scriptures make it clear that if you don't believe in God's abilities, you can't walk with Him. You must do away with doubts, fears, or selfish desires that may hinder God's work in your life. By developing a life of prayer, worship, and study, your spiritual roots are deepened, and your perspective about God begins to change and amplify. You begin to see things in the supernatural. You'll begin to see things that aren't as if they are. You'll begin to see light in the darkness. Drawing near to Him allows you to discern His guiding voice. Align your desires with His purposes and develop a deeper understanding of His character. This period of preparation can be transformative if you commit yourself to prayer, seeking His wisdom in every step. As you grow closer to God, you'll find ultimate satisfaction in Him. Also, it is important to cultivate patience and perseverance. Patience is a virtue that takes time to develop. However, it is impossible to wait without having patience. Therefore, while you wait for your prayers to be answered, it is necessary to practice patience and perseverance. You must understand that God operates with order and precision. He does not act randomly, meaning you cannot rush or force God to act outside of His timing. Release the desire for immediate gratification and have faith that God knows the best time to bring the answers to your prayer. Just like the psalmist in Psalm 27, 13 through 14, let this be your anchor. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Child of God, you must also surrender your desires to Him and seek His wisdom and guidance. In prayer, you often find yourself presenting your numerous requests and desires to God. However, true surrender involves releasing your desires to His will. This means that if His will does not align with your desires, you should be willing to let go. Acknowledge that His plans for your life may differ from yours, and trust that His way is always better. Surrendering to God's will allows you to always work in alignment with His purpose, bringing about true fulfillment. In agreement with this, Proverbs 19.21 clearly states that God's plans prevail in all circumstances. While you wait, you must also practice contentment. Seek His direction in every step you take. Cultivate a sense of contentment in the process, and He will guide you toward the fulfillment of His promises. While waiting, you might be tempted to even compare the lives of others to yours. Beloved, you don't need that at this moment. Engaging in unhealthy comparisons will weaken your faith, make you question God, and even tamper your mental health. Do not give room 
to jealousy, envy, and complaints. Filter them out and prepare your heart to receive from God. Contentment does not also mean complacency. It means finding peace and satisfaction in the present moment, even as you wait for your prayers to be answered. Rather than focusing solely on the desired outcome, you can find contentment by appreciating the growth, lessons, and blessings that occur during the waiting period. Contentment simply means being grateful for the few drops of rain while awaiting the heavy downpour. Beloved, an ungrateful man cannot receive from God. As you await God's response to your prayers, strive for gratitude in your present circumstances. Gratitude allows you to cultivate a mindset of appreciation for the blessings you already have and those yet to come. When gratitude and contentment fill your heart, it creates room for God to work. Dear child of God, getting ready for what you prayed for is not just about the fulfillment of your desires. It is an invitation to a deeper faith, a steadfast trust, and a transformative surrender to God's will. As you navigate this waiting period, you'll uncover hidden treasures of wisdom, strength, and joy that will prepare you for the blessings you seek. You'll discover that God desires to equip you not only with the desires of your heart, but with the character needed to steward those blessings well. He molds your heart to align with His, shapes your mind to think in His ways, and strengthens your spirit to walk in faith, even when the wait seems long. As you embrace this transformative journey, you'll realize that the waiting is not a delay, but a divine classroom where God imparts invaluable lessons of patience, perseverance, and trust. So, dear believer, as you get ready for what you have prayed for, be encouraged that every step in every moment of waiting is purposeful. It is an opportunity for God to refine, shape, and strengthen you. Embrace the process with an expectant heart, knowing that the one who heard your prayers is faithful to bring them to pass at the perfect time. Always remember that God loves you beyond measure, and He delights in seeing His children grow, flourish, and witness the fulfillment of their prayers. So, trust in His unfailing love, surrender your desires to His will, and rejoice in the assurance that as you get ready for what you have prayed for, God is working behind the scenes, orchestrating miraculous moments, aligning perfect circumstances, and preparing blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Get ready, dear friend, and be encouraged. Your prayers are heard, your faith is noticed, and your breakthrough is imminent. Keep pressing forward, keep seeking God, and keep your heart open to receive the abundance He has in store for you. In the process of getting ready, you will discover that the greatest blessing is not merely the fulfillment of your prayers, but the transformation that takes place in your heart, drawing you closer to the one who knows you intimately and loves you unconditionally. Have you ever felt like your prayers are bouncing and are not being heard? Like the things you've been fervently asking God for are just out of reach? Do you find yourself growing tired of waiting for answers to your prayers? Be strong in faith, beloved. God has not forgotten you because He is preparing you for those great blessings He is about to deliver. He wants to take you through the process before you finally possess it. I need you to sit back and listen to these powerful words of assurance from God, your Father. First, He is saying, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. What a great assurance from a loving father. He is not idle. He is definitely doing something aligning the scenes from behind in preparation for that great thing he is about to do. So your prayers aren't a waste of time. You must know that God does not delay answering prayers or he doesn't want to give. Rather, he possibly wants to enlarge your desires and give you more abundant blessings. For instance, if you would need two cups of water for the journey ahead, but go to the river with a spoon, you would be disappointed to know that your thirst can't be quenched. However, the means to access it is too small. If you are busy singing, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, and God is coming with 10 jars, there will be wastage. The first thing he needs to do is to enlarge your capacity before the outpouring. Sometimes God may want to give you something bigger but he discovers that you are satisfied with your expectations and not ready for his blessings. 
He intentionally prepares your heart and expands your desires so you won't be limited, which was the case with the widow who met the prophet Elisha in the Bible. All she wanted was a means to pay her debt, but God, through the prophet, was planning an overflow of wealth. The Lord continued to bless her to the extent of her capacity. The oil dried up as soon as the available jars were filled, whereas she had enough time earlier to borrow as many jars as possible. Beloved, these are just instances to make you see things differently. When it feels like your prayers are unanswered, remember that God is not ignoring you. God's timing in answering your prayers is not due to a lack of willingness on His part. He is preparing you. The process may be challenging, but it is in those moments of refinement that you are prepared to receive the blessings He has in store for you. You don't need to murmur or grumble. Instead, keep believing and trust His timing. When you feel like giving up, remember that God is not only working on your prayers, but also working on you. You are an instrument in His hands, and what you're praying for may be God's next project in your life. God wants to equip you so that you can work smoothly. The journey of preparation may come with persecution, trials, or pain. If you want your heartfelt requests to be granted, especially when they are significant, please prepare for these seasons. So, when the path ahead seems unclear, remember that God is paving the way for your dreams to come true. Your prayers are not going unheard. They will be answered at the accurate moment. All you need to do is trust God and pray with unwavering faith. Trust that He won't disappoint you no matter what. Don't limit God in your requests because of the present situation. Believe that things will turn out fine. Even in the season of preparation, God still wants you to ask in prayers for all your needs. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul assures the Ephesians that God can do much more than their prayer points. He said, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. There is no limitation to the power of God. It's immeasurable. All your heartfelt requests and desires are small before him. It takes him nothing to actualize them, but you must be ready for it. God's power is at work in you, enabling him to accomplish far beyond what you can ask or even imagine. As you pray and seek God's will, he is actively working within you, preparing and equipping you before releasing the answers that will exceed your expectations. Never see your prayers as a waste of effort when you present them before God. See yourself as an instrument God is expanding to fit into His blessings. Have faith that He won't disappoint you. Do you desire God's blessings and breakthroughs? Your answer might be yes. However, have you considered the power you need to handle what you are praying for? Are you sure your heart has enough room to accommodate His blessings? How strong is your faith in Him? God doesn't act like humans, giving His children only what they ask for at any time. He wants to prepare a place for something mighty before He finally delivers. Can you wait until He is done? You need to believe in this process. In the Bible, David was anointed as the future king of Israel, but that didn't guarantee him an automatic enthronement. He faced a series of challenges and obstacles before ascending to the throne. He endured persecution and lived in exile. His life was at stake, yet God molded him into a strong and courageous leader. God took him through the school of humility, perseverance, endurance, trust, and forgiveness. David believed in the power of God's anointing on him and knew that, though it would require time, he would reach his peak. Even after becoming king, his son Absalom threatened his life. However, he was prepared for such trials because he had experienced a similar situation before. He always trusted God as his defender and refuge because he had been prepared for such challenges. Just like David, having faith in God's promises can sustain you through difficult times and help you through the waiting years. Do you know that David became one of Israel's greatest kings and that Jesus was referred to in the New Testament as the Son of God? That's how far God's purpose can be fulfilled in your life if you sincerely wait on God. God knows the perfect time for your appearance, never early, never late. It takes patience and a lot of faith, but it's worth the wait. If David had rushed to retaliate against his enemies to ascend the throne quickly, he might have missed it for life. Even if he had become king, he might have missed out on the fullness of God's plan. God wants you to persevere and endure. He wants you to learn much before he certifies or qualifies you for his blessings. Although it may require waiting, 
You can trust that his timing is always right. The blessings and answers to your prayers will come at the right moment. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Paul brings another profound truth that brings hope to those with unanswered prayers. He said, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This verse reassures you that God works in all things for your ultimate benefit. Everything he's doing and taking you through is for your good. As you wait on him, you imbibe the virtue of patience, which will help you scale through situations that others tag as difficult and insurmountable. If you truly love God, then believing in him should not be a problem. Your love for God should make you trust him, regardless of the outcome of your prayers, positive or negative. Whichever comes, you should see it as part of the plan for your growth and to build you up for something greater. Sometimes the greatest blessings are delayed because God wants to bless you abundantly and beyond what you can imagine. He wants to open doors that will surprise you, but you need to wait on Him. You may not have a child now. God might be preparing your womb and family for the next president that will do the will of God during His tenure and generation. Another reason why blessings can be delayed is for God to have total glory. When people find themselves in challenging or difficult situations, they often turn to God for guidance and support. They offer prayers, seek assistance, and hope for a positive outcome. However, once their prayers are answered and their desired outcome is achieved, they may shift their focus away from God. The gratification of their immediate desires consumes them, and they begin to attribute their success solely to their efforts, neglecting God's role. They pray for a good job and end up becoming too busy for God when it arrives. They request healing from sickness and forget about the healer. That is why God takes people through seasons of building and preparation before their blessings are realized. He takes them through the school of wisdom, endurance, patience, perseverance, and faith. You cannot pass through this school and then believe that your achievements are solely a result of your abilities and actions. In the seasons of preparation, Don't forget that God is shaping you to the point where you establish a solid foundation in Him. And He is sure you won't disappoint Him afterward, but rather acknowledge His hand in your life. When you understand these seasons, you will complain less and trust God's unwavering power more. Also, did you know that a new level attracts new devils? When you are praying for something, expect that greater enemies will approach. The bigger your blessings, the more enemies you will have to fight. And are you ready to spiritually wrestle against them? God might also be building your spiritual muscles to prepare you to face any giants coming your way after your blessings finally arrive. So, maximize this period and stay prepared. Believe in God and His plans. Moreover, even if the answers to your prayers do not align with your desires or occur according to your preferred schedule, it does not diminish God's essence or sovereignty. God's ways are beyond your comprehension. His faithfulness, love, and power remain constant, regardless of whether your prayers are answered in the manner or time frame you anticipate. You should always believe in God, knowing He knows you better than yourself. If your request didn't come as planned, remain faithful to Him, and He will not disappoint you. During these trying seasons, draw close to God and seek to hear from Him. He has much to say during this period of your hunger for Him. Read and meditate on His Word. There are life stories of people who have gone through the same challenges and emerged stronger. Begin to see yourself as someone who is growing and improving. Use this time of preparation to grow in faith, cultivate gratitude, and nurture your relationship with Him. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Patience and persistence are the keys to receiving answers to your prayers. Trust that God is working diligently behind the scenes, aligning everything according to His divine plan. God is refining your character, strengthening your faith, and molding you into someone ready to receive the blessings He has in store for you. Keep believing, for God is preparing you for what you have been praying for. Are you facing challenges and setbacks that leave you feeling isolated and discouraged? During these moments of despair, you may ignorantly question the reason behind the struggles. Every challenge is not always an attack from the enemy. However, just like a skilled gardener prunes a plant to promote growth and vitality, 
God also prunes his children to prepare them for something better. But, for many, such moments seem to be the most unpleasant and difficult moments of their Christian journey. God wants you to be patient as he takes you through that difficult period because he's grooming you for a better life ahead. How then can you identify this season of preparation? First, God will separate you from the world. God doesn't always work with a crowd. Feeling disconnected from the world around you is a sign that God is pruning you. You may feel stuck in a rut because nothing seems to work. It could also be that you are not progressing in your spiritual journey, yet you are unsure what to do next. During these times, God is calling you to disconnect from the distractions of the world and focus on Him. He wants you to spend more time in prayer, studying the Bible, and seeking His guidance. Let go of the things holding you back and trust in His plan for your life. Don't struggle with Him. Don't aspire to find solutions to your problems first before considering what God is saying. He knows you're going through a tough time. He knows you are in dire need of a solution, but the lasting solution is rooted in your obedience. In John 15, 4 through 6, Jesus says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. This scripture reminds you that you cannot bear fruit on your own. It is a necessity that you remain connected to Christ to grow and bear fruits. And for you to remain in Christ, you must first dwell in Him. So whenever the tribulations and stress of the world seem too hot for you to bear, it is an opportunity to dwell and deepen your relationship with Jesus. It is a call to personal retreat, a time to focus on your relationship with God and wave off distractions. The best thing to do at this point is to reflect on your life as an individual and ask God to reveal areas where you need to grow and change. Also at this point, don't neglect fellowship with other brethren of the faith. Seek the advice of other Christians who can help you navigate the season of pruning. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. The second sign that God is pruning you is when your heart is overwhelmed and burdened. You may feel like you have too much on your plate and you're not sure how you're going to get everything done. At this point, remember that God is calling you to surrender your burdens to Him and trust in His plan. Seeking comfort and solace from friends by opening up to them won't help you. Only God can give you peace at such instances. He wants you to let go of the things that are weighing you down and rely on His strength to see you through each day. Constantly remind yourself that He is in control and that He will never leave or forsake you. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This scripture points out that you do not have to carry your burdens alone. You can freely come to Jesus and find rest for your soul. He's ever willing to do this for you because he is the only true burden bearer. Once you recognize this truth and take up his yoke in place of yours, you will discover that God was calling you to perform great exploits. Another sign that God is pruning you is when you experience pain and suffering. You may be going through a difficult season in your life, not knowing how you will make it through. Dealing with physical, emotional, or spiritual pain has never been a pleasurable experience. In this season, you'll be compelled to question God. Beloved, during these times, God wants you to remember that He is with you till the end of time. Cast all your cares on Him and be relaxed. Also, trust his plan and believe that he is working all things together for your good. Apostle Paul speaking in Romans 8:28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This is an affirmation that God is working all things together for your good, even the difficult and painful ones. God is so intentional about all that concerns you because you are the work of his hands. A songwriter acknowledged this and wrote, All things are working for my good. It's intentional, never failing. 
Pain and suffering have never been pleasurable, but when it comes your way, choose to see the positive side of it. Don't lamb it or complain because the moment you do, the devil will seize that opportunity to sow discouragement in your heart. If this happens, you'll be blinded from being beyond your current predicament. God wants you to know he didn't bring you this far to leave you. If only you could complain less and listen more, you'll know the mysteries behind your situation. If Job had listened to his wife's voice to curse God and die, he would have lost his place in the sight of God and there would have been no opportunity to restore his glory. You must watch out for those who speak to your soul this season. Are they urging you to stay with God or give it all up? Dear child of God, the season of pruning requires patience, self-discipline, and open-mindedness, all crowned with a willingness to obey God's instructions. Learn to be disciplined and watch your words this time because it has the power of life and death. Without discipline, you'll lose everything even before it comes. Although this is a time you must embrace humility because God cannot work with a proud person. Be humble and let God work on pruning off your excess. Don't expect to have it all rosy because you're a child of God. Look at Joseph, for instance. His season of pruning lasted for years with many unpleasant surprises. Ordinarily, he would have given up when Potiphar threw him into prison for an offense he didn't commit. Yet he trusted God's timing and eventually enjoyed the pruning process. How about the man after God's heart, David? As the last child of his father, he was supposed to experience all the love and attention. However, God groomed him from being a shepherd boy, caring for his father's sheep to being a king over God's people. Even after being anointed king, God took him through several challenges from defeating Goliath to running from Saul. Through these, David learned a great deal and eventually emerged with a committed, disciplined army. God pruned him to protect him from the spotlight that would have led to his ruin. Beloved, this divine process of pruning, growth, and transformation can be painful, uncomfortable, and difficult to comprehend. But be comforted knowing that God is always with you. You can trust in his plan and believe him. He is preparing you for something greater. Learn to draw closer to him and rely on his strength to get through the difficult times. Through this process, God removes all that might hinder your spiritual growth. It could be unhealthy relationships, sinful habits, or worldly distractions keeping you from fully surrendering to His will. God wants to free you from these hindrances so that you can bear fruit and live a life that glorifies Him. Aside from that, God's pruning process strengthens your faith. Just as a tree grows stronger when it endures strong winds, your faith grows stronger when tested and refined through trials. James 1, 2-4 says, Consider it a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be matured and complete, not lacking anything. This passage admonishes that you embrace trials and challenges as an opportunity for growth and maturity of your faith. God has a specific plan and purpose for you. He knows the desires of your heart and wants to use you to establish His kingdom on earth. Now, you know that your struggles and hardships are not in vain. They are tools meant to shape, refine, and mold you into the best version of yourself. In the same way, a tree is pruned to remove dead branches and stimulate new growth. God is also pruning you to remove negativity, self-doubt, and limitations that may hinder your progress. It is through this divine process that you're being prepared for the blessings and opportunities that lie ahead. So just trust in God's plan, embrace the pruning, and have faith that something extraordinary awaits you on the other side. In this season, be receptive to the process. Seek divine wisdom and guidance, embrace the refining fire, trust God's timing, and welcome the glorious outcome. Above all, never relent in prayer. The Bible prescribes consistent and fervent prayers as a tool of communication with God and the greatest weapon of a believer. Daniel and Nehemiah have a record of persistence in prayer. You can also be like them. According to scripture, effectual fervent prayers coupled with righteousness avail much. When you do all these things, you'll fit perfectly into God's designed purpose for you. 
Also, you'll understand and embrace the idea that God's pruning is a testament to his unwavering love and belief in your potential. As you respond to God's pruning with faith and obedience, you'll witness the beautiful outcome of his work in your life. Remember, dear friend, God's pruning is not a punishment, but to prepare you for the glorious future that awaits you. Take the bold step today by allowing him to remove whatever might hinder you, strengthen your faith, and prepare you for the greater purpose he has in store for you. Remain blessed. Have you ever considered the possibility that there might be something about your life God wants to reveal to you? Do you often encounter challenges or limitations when trying to handle everything on your own? Is there anything holding you back from opening yourself to God? God wants me to tell you that He needs you to allow Him to work in your life, align you, and shine a brighter light on every dark aspect. For you to experience fulfillment in life, attain courage in the storm and joy in chaos, you need to surrender the wheels of your life to God, the only one who holds the world in the palm of His hands. In Philippians 2.13, the Bible says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Paul emphatically reminds the Philippians that it is God who works within us, empowering us to both desire and act in ways that fulfill His purpose. God wants to give meaning to your life. Your purpose for living can only be defined by Him. He wants you to always do His will because they are always perfect. You've been struggling with Him for so long, beloved. He intends to speak to you but can't get your attention. He needs you to open up to Him to work in you and through you. By surrendering yourself to His work in your life, you allow Him to shape and guide you according to His divine plan. God wants you to see the importance of trusting surrendering, and seeking His will in your life. When you come to terms with this, you position yourself to experience His blessings and the fulfillment of His purpose for you. Embracing a relationship with God can provide a deeper sense of meaning in your life. What looks hopeless will begin to make sense. You will begin to see the light of God in every situation. Beloved, only in God, can you find true peace and a sense of fulfillment? Recognizing that you are part of a greater plan and that your life is something to give to this generation brings fulfillment and satisfaction. In the hierarchy of priorities and relationships, the Alpha and the Omega desires to hold the foremost position in your life. He can't work through you when you barely give him attention. He can't work through you when you block him out of the affairs of your life. Before considering any other aspect, such as personal desires, ambitions, or relationships, you should prioritize your relationship with God. Allowing God into your life comes with peace and comfort, especially during difficult times. Knowing that you are not alone and that God cares for you can alleviate anxiety and provide solace. But how will you experience all this when you never allow him? In the Bible, Jonah disobeyed God and struggled to let God's will dominate his life. God commanded him to go to the city of Nineveh to deliver a message of judgment. But Jonah was reluctant to fulfill this task because Nineveh was known for its wickedness. Jonah feared that if the people repented, God would show them mercy instead of punishing them. God dislikes the hesitancy and reluctance you may exhibit when he beckons to you to let him operate in your life. He is displeased when his relationship with you is gradually becoming secondary. You need to come to the obedience of Christ to allow him to work on you. Instead of obeying God's command, do you know that Jonah chose to flee from his responsibility? He was hoping to escape God's presence and avoid delivering the message. Pause and think. Do you ever realize that your life is in God's hands? He can give life and withdraw it. His request to work on your life is never a limitation of his power in any way. He can choose to force himself on your life. 
but he needs it to be done voluntarily. He needs you to cooperate and agree with him. He has the map for all your life's journey. He has the power of life and death and the ability to create, mend, and destroy. What else do you need to completely trust him for an operation? In 2 Chronicles 7.14, God says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. In this text, we see that God doesn't derive joy from forcing people to please him. Instead, he expects humility and sincere brokenness to demonstrate that his work is perfectly done. Just as a surgeon never forces a patient to undergo surgery, God wants you to completely trust him, forget about the tools in his hands, and rely on his promises as he begins to work in you. The project is to remove what should not be there, fix what should be there, and prepare you for the performance of his plans. God's project in your life is to heal the wounds of the past. It is a cure for the damage your life has experienced before now. When you open yourself to God, He begins to mend your broken heart, operating on it and making it new. Unlike Jonah, God desires that you are open to His leading, even when it challenges your desires or goes against your preconceived notions. The transformative power of God's mercy and grace is there to shield you when challenges arise. God needs your obedience, trust, and reliance on Him to help you navigate the process. Have you in the past fallen into the trap of self-delusion? Has your heart been controlled by your emotions? Have you repeatedly made mistakes and felt guilty for your ignorance? God wants to occupy a space in your life so you can experience His divine guidance. He can provide guidance and wisdom to navigate life's challenges. When you dedicate yourself to prayer, meditation, and seeking divine direction, you will gain clarity and insight to make better decisions. You will be prevented from making deadly errors that could derail your life, dreams, and purposes. Just as Paul said in Philippians 1.6, saying, Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God wants you to know that he has initiated a positive transformation or process in you, which includes your spiritual growth, character development, and fulfillment of a specific purpose in your life. Do you have an unfinished project or an abandoned task? Is there a project that has the potential to change your life financially, but you feel stuck and tempted to quit? Don't give up. God can still work it out. The never-failing God promises that He will not abandon everything that concerns your life halfway. God is the best orchestrator. He will continue and carry out the work He has started, ensuring its fulfillment and completion. When God starts an operation, He doesn't leave it half done. He promises to bring it to completion. In the concluding part of the text, the Bible points to the final stage of His divine work, the return of Jesus Christ. The beautiful thing about this is that God didn't promise to stop His divine work soon. His promises remain sure until death. God's promise of eternal life is included in His activities in your life. When you follow His teachings, He offers you the hope of a future beyond this earthly existence. Far beyond the blessings you enjoy here on earth, God promises you a better life in heaven. Are you still living in sin, filled with guilt and regrets? Today is a day of freedom. God's love and forgiveness are unconditional. Allowing God into your life is an intention to experience His forgiveness and find redemption for all your past mistakes. He will definitely pardon you and set you up for a joyful, peaceful, and guiltless life. After making this decision, you will begin to experience personal growth and spiritual development as you pray, read, and meditate on the Word of God daily. 
Your life will be renewed daily as the eternal work of grace continues. Another dangerous mistake you must avoid is succumbing to the world's enticements that distract God's work in your life. These moments often come with persecution, temptation, and rejection from people around you. You must understand that God is working. And like a patient in the operating theater, you must remain silent until the great surgeon is done. In Romans 12, 2, Paul says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Avoid any advice that doesn't align with God's will for you. Resist the influence of the world and allow God to continue the transformation in your life. During this process, align your thoughts, desires, and actions with His truth, becoming attuned to His will and able to discern what is good and pleasing to Him. Sometimes His will may not align with yours, but as long as your heart is open to transformation, you will experience peace, confidence, and rest. However, God wants you to bear fruit and reproduce. He created all living creatures and formed man with wisdom and strength. Man used everything God has made as raw material to bring forth all the beautiful things you see today. If man made thousands of machines from the raw materials provided in the seven days of creation, giving your life to him for an operation is another process of reproducing ideas and visions that can give birth to great inventions bring solutions to numerous problems, and change your generation forever. Your patience, endurance, and perseverance are all that God requires for your development and gradual maturity in His pattern. God's work in you is systematic, progression through steps and processes. As you grow, the purpose of His work becomes clearer and brighter. Do you also know that God wants you to work for Him? He wants you to be useful for His glory. Your Creator never intended for you to pass through life without fulfilling your divine mandate. You cannot afford to waste His efforts and investments in your life. He is waiting for you to respond to His call and assignment. Believing in God's presence and relying on His power in your life can empower you to face challenges with courage and resilience. This assurance can help you overcome obstacles that might otherwise seem insurmountable. With God's investment in you, you have the power to confront life's battles, move mountains, and break yokes. His work in you is supernatural and infinite. Through this process, you can heal the sick, overcome oppression, and resist the devil at any time. All you need to do is trust and rely on him alone. Surrender all your desires, will, and plans to him. Be patient and persevere while he works in you. Do not lean on your own understanding, but instead give Him the first place. He has a greater plan to give your life significance and bring fulfillment and satisfaction to you. Prayer is a perpetual exercise that all Christians perform. No doubt you've been praying for years. Even before you became an adult, prayer must be one of the fundamental lessons your parents taught you so it has become part of your existence. When you wake up in the morning, you pray. Sometimes in the afternoon, you still pray. And of course, you won't sleep without a word of prayer to God. However, have you ever thought of this question? Why do we pray? Why is prayer a necessity? Is it possible to do without it? Absolutely not. Praying goes beyond asking and committing everything to God. Many Christians do not know the true meaning of prayer. Yes, prayer is a way of communicating with God. That's very true. However, have you ever looked closely at the word communicate? Many Christians don't notice this. Communication here means that it is the act of fellowshipping with God. When you pray, you're expected to know the heart of the Father. He wants to speak to you as well, not just you talking. Look at the lives of the men of old. Abraham would pray and God would speak with him. Have you been praying to know the heart of the Father? In truth, it's the only way that man knows to communicate with God. Since you are a tripartite being, prayers nourish your spirit. But there's more to prayers than that. 
While many believe that prayer is only a weapon of spiritual warfare, they believe that we should only pray when there's a problem. And when the problem is solved, we can stop praying until another arises. After all, God is a mighty man in battle. So just ask for his help during grievous seasons and enjoy the results. That's not how it ought to be. There's more to the act of prayer. The Apostle Paul admonished us to always pray in his letter to the Thessalonians. That simple injunction tells us that prayer is not an occasional event. Some Christians believe that praying is a form of religious activity. They attend numerous services every day to mark their prayer attendance and leave. They don't believe so much in establishing a relationship with God. They only see prayer as one of the things you must do to look like a Christian. But no, prayer is more than an activity. We see this exemplified in the life of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They keep prayer times. They go into the temple to observe them, but come out of the temple to live their normal lives. It doesn't mean more than that to them. There's no humility in their hearts when they pray, even though they bow their heads. That's not the kind of prayer you should indulge in. Prayer is more than an activity. Perhaps the reason why you think you should pray is to simply get your daily bread. That's you turning God into a baker. Once you get what you need, you run off. The 10 lepers cried to Jesus. They wanted him to cleanse them. He told them to wash in the Jordan River and go show themselves to the priest. They got their miracle, but only one remembered the source of the miracle. You are likely one of those nine. Praying is more than getting what you need. The question still lingers. Why should we pray? Jesus said in John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24, In that day you will no longer ask me everything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Jesus said you haven't asked for anything, but you've been praying. Perhaps you've not been asking for things of eternal value. Most of the prayers you pray are to acquire ephemeral things. They can't last long. A young man could spend hours praying just for a car. That doesn't have eternal value. Looking at the lives of the ancients in the Bible, you should pray for the following reasons. Don't be surprised that the first reason you should pray is for a clean heart. There's pollution in the world. Every day, sin is uprooting many from the presence of God. The devil perpetuates this by soiling their hearts. The presence of God must always be of utmost importance to you. However, you can't stay here unless you have a clean heart. King David understood this. He didn't ask for more chariots of war at this time. He didn't crave more women. Instead, he told God to create in him a pure heart. This should be one of the reasons why you pray every day. You must daily come to the presence of God with a clean heart. The Bible also says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we must always pray for God's mercy. Don't be high-minded when you approach the throne of God. Always come with a humble heart. God will not despise a broken and contrite heart. David knew this secret. Yes, he prayed for victories over his enemies, but more for a pure heart and for mercy. No wonder God called him a man after his own heart. Another reason why we should pray is to understand God's love for us. Many Christians still live the way of the flesh because they have not felt the weight of Christ's sacrifice. How can such a Christian love their neighbors? For a true Christian, it's a serious matter to lay before God in prayer. The elements of this present world don't want a man to love the Lord or his neighbor. The scripture affirms that in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold. The only way to keep your love for God on fire is to pray fervently about it. At the end of the day, what would matter in eternity is the love for God. To also avoid committing evil on the earth, you need the love of God reigning in your heart. We also need to pray for godly wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We need godly wisdom in all that we do. Before embarking on any endeavor, God must be consulted. Before ascending to a position, godly wisdom is required. It's a pity that many believers thought that once an elevation comes, the next thing is to party with friends. You shouldn't do that. Instead, 
go to your closet and ask for God's wisdom to be bestowed upon you. Before David's death, he had appointed Solomon to rule in his stead. And when Solomon ascended the throne, he didn't consult the Psalms of his father. Instead, he went back to God to plead for wisdom. He didn't ask for riches, nor did he ask for victories over his foes. His only request was wisdom. God didn't only grant his request, but added riches and long life to it. The Bible records that there was no king like Solomon in wisdom. That's what God wants you to pray for. You don't have to become a king before you pray this. Living every day with others in your home, office, and the like also requires wisdom. Very close to wisdom is discernment. You need the ability to choose between right and wrong. You need the grace to make the right judgment. Do you think it's awkward to pray for this? No. In the book of Genesis, Abraham told his servant to journey back to his father's house and choose a wife for Isaac. The servant just couldn't depend on his knowledge. Therefore, he prayed. He told God that any woman who gave him water to drink and watered his camels should be the right woman. And that's exactly what happened. The servant made the right choice because he prayed for spiritual discernment. Are you also praying for discernment or only asking God for things? You should also pray for a greater measure of faith. Faith is the bedrock of every Christian. You need faith to seek the face of God continually. You need faith to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. Many believers backslide today because they lack faith in God to solve their problems. It's paramount that you pray to God to increase your faith. When your faith increases, you can decree and it will come to pass. You can speak to any mountain in your life to move into the sea. Pray for a strong faith like that of the three Hebrews. They saw not just any fire, but a fiery furnace, yet remained undaunted. God is willing to fill you with such faith as you pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 says, As you help us by our prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Most times your prayers are zoned only to yourself and your family. That shouldn't be so. You should pray for others as well. The Apostle Paul in this verse asked the brethren to pray for them as they continued the work of evangelism. Endeavor to remember the sick, orphans, and needy in your prayers. Commit missionaries into the hands of God. In short, pray for as many as you know. This is of great reward. The more you pray for others, the more God answers your prayers. Above all, always pray for the grace of God. God's grace does things you otherwise won't be able to do for yourself. God's grace can lift you to where you can't reach in 10 years. When you look at the life of Esther in the Bible, you'll realize that it was God's grace that took her to the palace. More grace came over her when she approached the king without permission. Always ask for God's grace and favor. Grace has nothing to do with your strengths or qualifications. Instead, it makes you qualified for things you never deserved. Even at that, you don't have to do anything to qualify for God's grace. All you need to do is pray for it. Now you see why we should pray. We shouldn't pray only because of our needs. We shouldn't approach God's throne because of our problems alone. Instead, we should pray for wisdom, discernment, faith, grace, and His peace. James chapter 4, verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I admonish you to check your motives today before you pray. If worldly things still fill your prayers, God will not hear you. If your request is for your pleasure with no good to others, God will not answer your prayers. As you pray from now on, I implore you to pray in line with God's word and the betterment of others.